Thank you so very much. We are very happy to be with you this afternoon and we want to welcome you back to the North Jamaica Conference live stream right here at the Seventh-day Adventist Church Exchange. Pastor Parkinson, I noticed this morning you came in, you made sure everything was organized, but you had to leave because we wanted to make sure that we were abiding by the regulations of not more than 10 right here. So you came, you did what you had to do, but you slipped away, but you were following the program, sure, online. Yes, I, I was, was really following the program and I, I was really blessed by what I, by what I saw this morning. And so was I very blessed as well. Pastor, can you just pray for us to begin this Bible class? I'm going to ask you to bow your heads with me where you are as I pray at this time. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, our God, we want to thank you so much for many blessings you have bestowed on us from morning even until now. We ask, Lord, as we delve into your word, as we study once more, we pray that your spirit may come, that you may guide us. May you help us, Lord, to find hope and comfort in your words at this time. We ask for Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. The topic for the Bible class discussion this afternoon is coronavirus, the seven last plagues, and Jesus or deliverer. What a good thing we have a deliverer in this time of peril, Pastor. I tell you, uh, without that hope, then this world would have been in even more chaos at this time. Indeed. Pastor, let me start with some statistics. Up to when I checked, not long ago, Jamaica had 30 confirmed cases of coronavirus. And as has gone to 30. Yes, yes, 30. And with one death recorded so far, regrettably. Now, I am just clicking for the update, the world update, the latest figures internationally. And I observe here, Pastor, right now, across the globe, we have an multiple confirmed cases. The figure right now is 656,000. As a matter of fact, 900 and something, it's about 67,000. 30,000 death, deaths. 147, 141,000 have recovered so far. Wow, I, I tell you, this COVID-19 thing has caused the world to, to be closed down, as it were. Yes, and people are wondering whether this is one of the seven last plagues. We'll take a look at that very shortly. But Pastor, I observe based on the statistics, in terms of the number of active cases, number of people who currently who are confirmed to currently have the virus, active cases, here are the top 10 countries in the world. United States, Italy, Spain, Germany, France, Iran, UK, Switzerland, Netherlands, and Belgium, or, or rather Austria. These are the top 10 cases. I noticed that China is not in the top 10 in terms of actual active cases right now. And if I were to go further, Pastor, if you look at the top 20 to include Belgium, South Korea, Turkey, Canada, Portugal, Norway, Australia, Israel, Brazil, Sweden. Sweden is number 20 with 3,326 cases at the moment, current active cases. China right now is not in the top 20 in terms of active current cases. And one of my elders, Elder Randall Duncan, called me yesterday, Pastor, and he made an observation that I think the international community should take a look at. He said, Pastor, the world is following a lot of what China did initially, the lockdown areas and so on. But there's one significant thing that China did that we are not sure if the world is doing that. China, and I read a story, I checked it up, Pastor, on February 25. I see a story here. China just banned trade and consumption of wild animals. So China banned consumption of wild animals. That's one of the steps they took, which has kind of escaped the world, it seems. What do you think? Wow. 
wow, it is, it is surprising that China, they're not in the top 10, neither are the top 20. In terms of start, the active uh, current cases. Right. And it started out with China. So, um, and, and as you have mentioned, I'm wondering if the world is overlooking uh, the exemption of wild animals being consumed by, by people. And that is one of the factors that we probably need to look into. Yes. yes. And as we look at the seven last plagues, the big question, Pastor, is this. Is coronavirus one of the seven last plagues? People need to know. Pastor Parkinson, Yes. is coronavirus one of the seven last plagues? Well, uh, I must say a big no. It is not one of the seven last plagues. But I have something that I want to, to bring to your attention. According to the book, Last Day's Events, um, the first chapter of the book, it can also be found in Testimonies, Volume 9, page 11, 1909. It says here, and I quote, okay, I quote this one. Great changes are soon to take place in our world, and the final movements will be rapid ones. And we have seen the changes thus far, haven't we? Well, but this is the one I really want to, it's found here in chapter 2 of the last day's event. Let me just take my time to find it here. While you're locating it, it's just so interesting to know that what seemed impossible a few days ago yes. in terms of the rapidity of closure of world borders and, and, and travel and so on has happened right before our eyes in a matter of days, weeks. I tell you, uh, and as, as was said, the final movements will be rapid ones. So Very we can't rapid see ones indeed. What is that mean? No, this one it says here in, in um, chapter 2 of the last day's event it says, not only is vegetable life affected, but man suffer from pestilence. And we know, as was said in the Preaching this morning, pestilence can be considered as a, a disease, a virus, as, as, as you see. He said, these things are the results of drops from the vials of God's wrath being sprinkled on the earth and are but faint representations of what will be in the near future. So though it's not one of the, the plagues, as it were, the seven last plagues, it's just droplets are a faint representation of what is to happen in the near future. So, in terms of comparison to the seven last plagues, coronavirus is not even really a mock exam. It's like a class, a classroom test. I, I, I say it is just the smoke of the fire to come. Greater things to come. In Revelation chapter 14, turn with me in your Bibles in your homes, Revelation chapter 14, verses 9 and 10, the Bible says, The third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. That term, the wrath of God. We see that term again coming up so many other times. In Revelation chapter 15, verse 1, in your Bibles at your homes, following your Bibles right there, I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up again that term, the wrath of God. Then at Revelation chapter 16, verse 1, I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. So Pastor Parkinson, that term, the wrath of God, we are told clearly that those who, if any man worship the beast or his image or receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, Interesting, really two locations. Right. Forehead or his hand, the same shall receive the wrath of God. And here we are told, Revelation 15, 1 and 16, 1, the wrath of God is contained in the seven last plagues. I wonder why the Bible says that this mark of the beast will be received in the forehead or in, or, or in the hand. Is there significance? I believe there is a significance because the Bible also talks about the seal of God in the forehead. So there, there is something that is there that we need to look into. Yes, and while you touch on that, 
Interesting passage. Let's develop on this a little. So, we basically see two groups of people in the last days in the book of Revelation. Those who have the seal of God and stand on the side of Jesus and those who have the mark of the beast and stand on the side of the enemy. And as we see these signs, we notice that plague number one, very interestingly, because you, you, you explained that the coronavirus is not one of the plagues. So let's look at plague number one quickly. Plague number one, the first went, all of this vile upon the earth, they fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshipped his image. This is Revelation chapter 16 and verse 2. So we notice that with the first plague, that plague fell on those who had the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. Now, we don't have the context today to look into define really what the mark of the beast is. But certainly, because we know there are two groups, let's take the time to to explain who are those who receive the seal of God and therefore these ones will escape the seven last plagues. Okay, well, according to Revelation 7, you can turn it there with me, Revelation chapter 7. We can read from verse 1 of Revelation chapter 7. The Bible says, it says here, and after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, having the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor the sea, nor any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice from the four, to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth! neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. So the servants are sealed in their foreheads. Just one place, not in their foreheads and in their hands, in their foreheads. But the mark of the beast is, is, is received either in the forehead or in his, the hand. How would, you, how would you explain this significance? Why is it that those who have the seal of God only receive it in their foreheads. Right. What's the well, significance we, of we, that? We know that uh, the, the seal in the forehead, we know that the, the forehead uh, means the, the, the seat of intelligence. That's where you make your decisions, the frontal lobe, of course. And so this is where you make critical decisions, as opposed to those who will be having the mark in the forehead or in the hand. It, it, it does something or everything to do with the Sabbath, working on the Sabbath. And so by deciding not to obey the commands of God and by working, you know, the hand, you know, you use your right hand most of the times to work, then that will say something. Okay. Uh, we are a Bible-believing people. And um, even as we make sure that we spend time with God's word, the seal of God being the Sabbath of God, now, a seal basically carries three things. Yes. It carries the, the name of the, the person with the seal, um, the, the official title, the person's job description, person's profession, and the person's jurisdiction. What is there in the Bible that carries these things, these three marks, why we are sure that, the, that this, this Sabbath represents God's seal, that the Holy Spirit will stamp on God's people? Okay, well, the, the Bible, according to Exodus 20, verses 8 to 11, it carries all those, um, th the three things, the, the territory, the, uh, the name, and also the title. And yes. so if you go to Exodus 20, verses 8 to 11, then you will see what I'm talking about. Yes, yeah, so his name is clearly there. Jehovah, um, the Lord, clearly yes. there. The name is there. And his, his profession, his, the type of work he does is there. He's the he, creator. He made, so he's the creator. Yes. And his jurisdiction is there. Pastor, is his jurisdiction Jamaica only? No, you know, not only Jamaica, not only the world, but the entire universe. Yes, heaven and earth, heaven and earth. above, beneath, wherever, wherever we are in this universe, yes. is his jurisdiction. So the seal of God really... The Sabbath is really the seal of God. 
that will be impressed by the Holy Spirit upon the foreheads of God's people. And, and it, it is, it is I, I want for the, the people to understand that we are living in the last days and according to the Bible uh, from Revelation 7, it is saying that the, the spirit of the living God is searching the hearts and the minds of the people. And those who will be sealed are those who have made a covenant with Christ by sacrifice. Alright? So, if you are not sealed by the spirit of the living God, then you will have to suffer the consequences. And I'm so glad that God is not willing that any should perish, but that all come to repentance. And I'm also very happy that in, in Revelation 16, the plagues are outlined. But in Revelation chapter 7, I'm sorry, Revelation chapter 15, verse 1, the Bible plainly identifies that these seven angels are the seven last plagues to pour out. And before the plagues are actually poured out, verse 2 of chapter 15 says this, I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, over his image, and over his name, and over the number of, this, of his name, they were standing on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. So, interestingly, Pastor, while God, through the prophet, explains that the seven last plagues will come, before the plagues are actually shown to be poured out, there is assurance here, before, that a group of people will overcome and will escape those seven last plagues. And that is a wonderful thought. So God would have given us the, the hope for us to be comforted before even outlining the seven last plague, the wrath of God. Yes. And that, is, that is so wonderful. It means, therefore, ultimately, God's people will stand victorious. Victorious indeed. So, to what extent do we need to be afraid today of pestilences, of disasters, perhaps the first plague coming up, we know not when. To what extent do we need to be afraid? Right now, Pastor, I can tell you this. In some areas of the world, there are challenges getting sufficient food. Some people are panicking. Some are buying up things in store, storing and so on. Some are afraid. Some are anxious. What assurance does God give his people in these last days concerning what will happen to their bread and water? People think about bread and butter and water in these last days. How can God's people be assured in the upcoming peril, the seven last plagues, and even in the coronavirus period today? Well, it is said that food is the stuff of life, and as you mentioned, bread and water, one passage came to mind. According to Isaiah 33, verse 16, it says, you can find it with me, of course, and you mark it in your Bibles. Isaiah 33, verse 16, it says, He shall dwell on high, his place of defense shall be the munition of rocks. Bread shall be given him, his water shall be sure. And so God has promised that even in peril times, our bread and water will be sure. Seeing that um, the world, as it were, is locked down and persons probably wondering or fearful where they're going to get their next meal and so forth. But God has promised, just as we had fed Elijah and just as we fed the Israelites in the wilderness by manna, then God will provide. He is our great Jehovah Jireh. And as you spoke of him taking care of us, Psalm 91, 7 to 10 comes to mind. A portion of that says, says that a thousand shall fall at thy side, ten thousand at thy right hand. Find it in your, in your Bibles, in your homes, wherever you are. Psalm 91, verse, verses 8 to 10. A thousand shall fall at thy side, ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because was made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. What a promise from God, Pastor. Pastor, why do we need to worry about coronavirus in terms of, of whether or not God will take care of us? If, 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 look, if God has promised us that he will take care of us, he will shield us, and he will do as 
best as necessary to protect us, then we shouldn't be worried. I mean, if we are worrying, it would seem as if we don't believe in God. We would be like those who have no interest in God because they are worrying, they are fretting. It's as if they, they, they are so fearful of their life. And so if we, as Christians, are fearful of this coronavirus, um, like the persons out there, it means that we have not yet met Jesus. That is right. That is right. We, we, I mean, we should see this, these things and rejoice, knowing that when we see these things, we need to look up for our redemption draw it nigh. Yes, indeed. And you know, Pastor, it's very interesting that you should say that because we have the confidence that God is with us. And yet, as Christians, we do all that we can to protect ourselves from a human angle. So we follow the government guidelines fully. We support the government, we support the government guidelines, we support the health officials, we do social distancing. Also, normally you and I are sitting much closer for Bible class. Right. But we support the social distancing, we make sure to wash our hands thoroughly. As a matter of fact, once we leave here, once we step down here, we have our sanitization process to go through. We had it to come on, we have it to go through and so on. And in the books of Leviticus and Deuteronomy, God outlines a number of hygiene protocols that the world follows today. Yes. There are some cases, you know, Pastor, in Bible, where God said to the people, because Moses had, by, by some estimates, 2.53 million people in the wilderness, taking them from, from Egypt to Israel. And one of God's guidelines was that when certain diseases, when, when they were in doubt as to whether certain signs they indicate diseases. The people were to isolate for seven days. Yes. <laughs> and they were to review them after seven days. And if, they were if the signs were still not very clear, they were to isolate or quarantine another seven days. Fourteen days, Pastor. Fourteen days, just as we are seeing even yeah, today. Well, what this so. <laughs> Pastor, what we are seeing with scientists today, the Bible had it thousands of years before. I tell you, I tell you. So we can trust God. He knows. He's the expert. One of the signs, Pastor, that the coronavirus is not actually one of the seven last plagues as it, even though it's like a, a test, a classroom test, one of the signs is that the seven last plagues will actually fall after probation closes. Yes. And probation has not yet closed. After probation closes. Can you expand on that for us? All right, so the seven last plagues will come right after probation closes, meaning... When God's people are sealed, then that's the time when probation will be closed and then you will have the seven last plagues. And as you have mentioned earlier, in the seven last plague, the first one will be the, the sores, as it were. No, no, Zachariah, he gives a, a very graphic view of what will happen. So I'm going to be giving you two passages. Passages. Um, that is Zechariah 14, verse 12. That's the first one. It says, And this shall be the, the, be the plagues wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. It says, Their flesh shall consume away while they stand up on their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and the tongue shall consume away in their mouth. The first plague. So, I mean, coronavirus compared to this is nothing. Not only that, but the Bible helps us to understand that while this is happening, some persons will want death to come, but it will not come. According to Revelation 9 and verse 6, it says here, In those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. So death there and then will be taken a vacation. And so it is very critical for each one to seek God and to be sealed by the Spirit of God so that when the plagues begin to fall, then they will be covered by Jesus Christ. Indeed. Revelation 22, 11 says, He that is unjust, this will be a declaration that will be made just at the time when probation will close. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, 
let him be holy still. Revelation 22, 11. So probation will close where all of those who are righteous, covered by the blood of Jesus, cannot backslide again. That is right. But those who are outside of Christ uh, cannot accept Jesus again. This is the reason why I am so glad that probation is not yet closed. Because everyone will, will be given the opportunity to make it right with God. But, but, you know, God is a merciful God. He's a loving God. And as I said, he's not willing that any should perish, but all come to repentance. But one day, he will say, enough is enough. As you have said, he that is unjust, let, let him be unjust, unjust still. still. He that is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is holy, let him be holy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. Indeed. Let's take a quick look at what the seven last plagues actually are. We're not going to explain them today, just to take a quick look at them. And because, Pastor, I want to get to one of them to demonstrate something I observe happening even today. Now, in the first plague in Revelation 16, 1 and 2, as you indicated earlier, the plague is poured out upon those who have the mark of the beast. So, while we are not getting into the mark of the beast today, we know for sure that those who have the seal of God... Those who abide by God's commandments are covered by the blood of Jesus because the seal of God is God's Sabbath. Those who accept the, the seal of God and are covered by the blood of Jesus, these will escape the first plague. And while I was growing up pastor as a little boy, when I would have sores or bruises on my foot and so on, I would like to, I always liked to go to the sea right. because there seems to be something therapeutic about seawater. It would cure that thing quite, quite quickly. And I tell you, Pastor, the, the order of the plagues is interesting because after the, the, the sores in plague number one, plague number two says the, the, the angel poured out his veil upon the sea. Interesting. Inter the sea. So the, the place perhaps where people would run to for healing, God pours out the second veil upon the, the sea and it became as the blood of a dead man. So there can be no trading in the sea. All living creatures in the sea will die. This is, this is, this is, this is very serious indeed. And uh, what, what, what I was told while growing up, especially when you have sores, the sea is the, play, the place to go. Yes. And so, you know, so, 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 oh God does his thing, it is well done. Indeed. It is well done. Indeed. So the second plague is poured out upon the, the sea. And Revelation chapter 16, verses 4 and 5, tells us that the third angel poured his vial upon the rivers and the fountains of waters, and they became blood. So first of all, the sores, then the sea is gone. But at least you have a little water left. So God pours up the third vial now upon the rivers and fountains of water. So pastor, all the rivers, all the streams. I, do you think the, the baptismal pools will be blood as well in, in that time? Well. <laughs> so we better grab the opportunity now. Right now, because my, it might just well be that the, the pools will be as blood. Because at that time, probation will be closed. closed. Yes. yes and pastor, pastor, let me, let me put you on a spot here, pastor. So let's say we are living during the time of the seven last plagues. And plague number three comes. And all the rivers are turning to blood. And, you know, everybody's running away. And some people come for baptism at that time. Why? Probation is closed wow. already. Well, yeah, so now is the time is to the make time. our surrender to Jesus. It's the time to make our calling and election sure because uh, we don't know what will happen the next moment from now. And we wouldn't want for prob probation to be closed on us. So now is the time. No wonder why Jesus says, today, if you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Yeah. heat and blaspheme the name of God which had power over those pigs and they repented not 
to give him glory. This is another evidence that probably should ask us. Right, because, uh, I mean, they were given the opportunity to accept Christ, and they did not. So when they see these things happening, because they were not in any relationship with God, and all they do is curse and blaspheme, that's how you know when probation is for a particular person. Yes. They have nothing to do with God. You know, Pastor, if you look at the order of the plagues, it is evident that God is shutting down life on the earth. First plague falls upon those who have the mark of the beast sores. Second plague upon the sea, turning it to blood and so on. The third plague upon the rivers and fountains of waters. So there's no water anywhere to drink. And the fourth plague falls upon the sun. Wow. And there's no water. There's no so, water so God is, is plus shutting down. There earth. is sore on the body. I mean, it's going to be terrible. It's going to be terrible it's going to be indeed. Terrible. But in all of this, though, the assurance of the God. Assurance of God. The assurance of God. I have one God right here, Pastor. Wants to, wants I have one assurance us. right here. Psalm 121, verses 5 and 6. The Lord is thy keeper in the time of peril and plague and coronavirus. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. What assurance we have in Jesus. We don't have to fret about the plagues, Pastor. We if we are covered to, by his blood. If we are covered by his blood, then we don't have to fret. We don't have to worry. All we do is rejoice in the Lord, knowing that we are covered by his blood. Indeed. The fifth plague is poured out upon Revelation 16, verses 10 and 11. The fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast. This is the headquarters now of the, the beast. And hopefully at some time, perhaps, at a Bible study to come, we can expand on this. But the seat of the beast is hit by plague number five. And so what this tells us, Pastor, is that there's no, no, there's no, no good to us in seeking refuge from the beast or the mark of the beast. Because the headquarters of the beast will be hit directly by plague number five. No shelter in the beast or in the mark of the beast. Only in Christ. Right. And what I'm seeing, I mean, based on what the beast will be doing as it relates to the economy, because it said, the Revelation tells us that you can't buy or sell unless you have the mark. And so, with that said, I mean, many persons will be taking the mark of the beast because of finances, because of money. Right. And That's what as we are seeing the, the mark in the, in, in, the in, the hand. in the hand. And as we are seeing today, because of the coronavirus, I mean, the economy is another concern. Because it's concern right now. Yes. I mean, <laughs> no wonder why Jesus says, What shall it profit a man who gave this whole world? This. And lose his soul. It doesn't make sense because if, if the beast will be a, a victim of the wrath, then I mean, why run to the beast? Why run to the beast? No use at all. The sixth plague, Revelation chapter 16, verse 12. And the sixth angel poured his vial upon the great river Euphrates. The water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. So we can expand on that perhaps at another. Bible class. But the seventh and final plague, Revelation 16, verse 17. Plague number seven. The, seven. the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, it is done. So this one goes to the air, so as long as you are breathing, this one is going to affect everybody. God, God is going to get serious. I tell you, it is of God because we know God who is a loving God merciful God a compassionate Savior one day his wrath will be poured out and, and that is so strange but because of sin and what sin has done then God will have to pour out his wrath on sin what I usually say in the coming of Christ Christ will be coming to destroy sin yes that is what God is coming to destroy but if we are attached to sin, then when sin is being destroyed, then we will be destroyed with sin. That's how it is. And this is the time now that we should separate ourselves 
from sin. And the only thing that can separate us, let me say, let me put it another, another way. The only person that can separate us from sin is Jesus Christ. And so we need to separate ourselves from sin by making a covenant with Christ by sacrifice. Yes, you know, Pastor, I've heard a number of people say, we have been talking about Jesus for a long time. We have been saying he is coming for a long time. And he hasn't come as yet. When I look at the seven last plagues, I understand perfectly why he has not come as yet. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness, but is long-suffering towards word. Not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So God, God desires that every single individual be saved. And that is why there is an, an apparent delay. Yes. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. There's not even a real delay. There's just an apparent delay because he's not willing that any should perish. Because when you look at these plagues, Pastor, I wouldn't want any of these plagues to, to fall on my worst enemy. Right. And God wants us to be saved. Right. And God, he, he forewarns us because he has given us in, in, in the Bible... If you read the book of Matthew, Matthew 24, Mark 13, and also Luke 21, as it relates to the sequence of things that will be unfolding before he comes, then he would have given us ample time and ample, ample time. warning for us to make or call in an election sure. And so um, the Bible says, according to John 3:16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, should not perish, but have everlasting life. So whosoever. God, whosoever. Let's, let's look at who may be included in that. Whosoever. 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 Who can fall in that? Let's look at it another way. Who is excluded from that whosoever? No one is excluded. No Praise one is God. excluded. Praise God. However far we are in sin, however deep in sin, Jesus died for us. Praise God. Pastor, let's look. Let's put it in another context here. The coronavirus has really put a lot of people on edge. People are anxious, fearful, many are panicking. There has been a lot of dislocation. Economies are in peril. I was visiting, I was visiting a number of individuals in, in, in the Monique area, Monique district area on Wednesday. A number of people in the short content and Perth Town areas on Thursday. Many of these people lost jobs. Hotels have closed. Uh, at one, at one, in one visit, so many of us said, Pastor, the, the Martha Bray Rafters village is closing, I think they said Wednesday. The people are, are concerned. A lot of things are happening. A lot of dislocation. By the way, Pastor, when I visited, you know, as a pastor and as an elder visiting in this time, our visitation strategies have to be, be different. So when I visited, you know, Pastor, you know how I visited? I drove up to a gate, stayed in my car, gave a little word of encouragement to the brethren, prayed for them right there in my car. Right. Or, if the car could not go a certain place, I would come out, go close to the gate, and pray with them right there. And, 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 and sometimes I would see them coming to me to hug me. I said, no, no, come no further. Right. And I would say to them, you know, because I'm going so many places, I can't afford to bring anything to you. So I... I, even though we are hearing about three feet, I try to stay ten feet away. Because, you know, we still have to do our best. Right. Within government guidelines, because the Adventist Church is a church of law and order, and we support government guidelines and health official guidelines. But as I was visiting, I realized that people are really anxious and fearful. And there's a lot of dislocation in the world today. And this has taught me, Pastor, that what the Bible has been saying all these years, that the time will come when people will not be able to buy or sell, save those who are the mark of the beast, the, the purchase trade will be controlled. Some people thought this, was, this kind of thing was, was, was really fan fanaticism, extremism. But Pastor, we see now we that in today. a moment of time. Yes. What I do you think you, about that? Uh, well, um, firstly... As it relates to, because I've been hearing persons saying, if, if, 
if you are a child of God, you are Christians, then you should be able to do as you please. That's what they say. And so as it relates to the necessary precaution, then they, 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 they like, think that as Christians, we shouldn't follow them. But not, as, not the Adventist that, people. But as Christians, uh, though we know that we are protected by God, then we should be wise. Yes. We shouldn't just leave ourselves vul vulnerable like that. Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Because remember, you know, Pastor, as we said earlier, in Leviticus, in Numbers, in Deuteronomy, it was done. there are very yes. clear guidelines that Moses gave in terms of isolation, in terms of quarantines, in terms of washings, cleansings. So the things that the Ministry of Health are saying and the World Health Organization, Jamaican government, they are really, really Following, on stream yes. what the Bible says. Yes, that is and so we have to support them right. in, that, in that regard. In relation to you know, the economy and can't buy or sell, now, as we see what is happening in our world today, just in a moment, the, 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 the world can come to that fact where we, we, we heard of the one world order. And based on what is happening, it can, easy, can be easily done right now based on what is happening around the so world. Sufficient infrastructure is in place. It's in place. Or something like this to right. in a so, short order. So in short order. Because who um, would have thought that just a microscopic virus or organism could have, done, could have done such even when it comes to the economy? Yes. No one would have thought of such thing. But look at what is happening. It, it brings to me, you know, I mean... This has brought back prophecy into prominence. Yes. yes. Based on what is happening. Because right now, there are a lot of persons, a lot of people all over the world going back to the Bible. Mm -hmm. And so, for me, this is like a wake-up call. Wake-up call indeed. It is a wake-up call for all of yes. us. Yes. And I'm happy you said, Pastor, that a lot of people are going back to the Bible. And as I, the more I think about it, the more I realize that in order to overcome this virus and any kind of virus people have to learn to follow rules oh yes they, they, the government has given rules we have to learn to follow them because they are for our good yes moses outlined a number of these hygiene rules they have to be followed and so we we find that in in every organization in every society in every section of the world in order for there to be success there has to be a set of guidelines that people follow. And pastor, do you think God has a set of guidelines, rules, laws, commandments, whatever you want to call them, and that he requires all of us to follow them as well? What I believe so. Yes, God has put in place for our best rules, as it were, commandments, as it were, even the health laws. Yes. He has put that in place for our benefit because he wants for us to be the best we can be, health-wise and otherwise. Yes. And so uh, if we violate any of the commandments, any of the rules, even the health laws, then we will have to face the consequences. There are consequences. That's, there are consequences. Yes. Exodus 20 outlines the Ten Commandments. Yes. And uh, we are told in Revelation chapter 12 and verse 17 that these commandments play a central role in the last days. Yes. You know, it says... That's Revelation 12, 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman, representing God's church. Yes. And went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have, and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So this is the, in the last days, God's people will have the testimony of Jesus. So these people accept the blood of Jesus. Yes. They are covered by his grace. They don't believe in salvation by works. They are covered by his grace. They have the testimony of Jesus, which is the gift of prophecy. And here we are told that they keep the Ten Commandments as well. They are yeah. commandment keepers. Right. What, how would you, as we, we, we zero in to, to bring this Bible study to a close, how would you kind of put the Ten Commandments in, in perspective from your angle, Pastor, in terms of your personal life and the lives of God's children and how it relates to the grace of God? Because, because the grace of God... Yes. Is, it, is it sufficient to enable us to keep God's commandments or is it just that whether grace of God or not, we just can't keep God's commandments? Okay, well, we, uh, if, if we are saying that we, 
we, we are saved by the grace of God. It means, therefore, that we're going to keep his commandments. Because the, the mere fact that we want grace, it means that, because as we know, grace is the unmerited favor of God. And uh, the reason why we want grace is, that, is because we would have violated the law of God. Yes. And so in violating the law of God, it means, therefore, we need grace for, for God to forgive us. So this is how the, the commandments come into play. And if we know that we are saved, then by God's grace, we are going to keep his laws. Yes. And uh, let me just put in something here uh, as it relates to what is happening in the world with the coronavirus. If you notice, no, they are saying to us, the doctors, the professions, they are, professionals are saying to us that we need to keep our immune system optimum, at optimum peak. And, and they, they will stress the vegetables um, the fruits, the lifestyle, the lifestyle, exercise, exercise water. water. You, 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 you see what is happening? So, 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 so <laughs> the, the acronym New Start, Pastor. Yes. Acronym New Start, which we have practiced for many years. Can you just expand on that on that acronym a little? New okay. Start. New Start. Uh, simple. Um, it's an acronym, as you said. The the S for. Let's start with the N. With the N. And, and go right down. Nutrition. Yes. So so e. we need to eat. That which is good, and be moderate with that which is, um, be moderate with, with that which is good, and, and avoid totally those things that are harmless, things, are yes. harmful. Yes. E. E. Exercise. We need to exercise. We need to exercise. I mean, the body was was made to. Yeah, for motion. For motion. W. W. Water. We need to drink a lot of water, as as is recommended. We need to drink at least eight glasses. So do you only drink it? Um, is there any external? Yes, man. External use also. Bathe oh, no. because we don't, you know, uh, it is Wash a hands godliness. thoroughly. Yes. <laughs> Cleansiness is next to godliness. So we need to use yes. it in that matter. Yes. Yes. Uh, sunlight. Yes. Sunlight. T. Trust in God. Uh, and then the, the yes. And there's the A. A. Air. Fresh air. Fresh air. R. Rest. We pastor, need to take rest. You know, sometimes eight hours. Pastor, <laughs> talk the truth, Pastor. Talk the truth. Do you get the eight hours? Don't. This is Pastor. Yeah. Don't talk. I'm gonna no, ask I'm a gonna talk, I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna ask a rhetorical question. Okay. Do you get eight hours rest per? Let me not ask you, Pastor. <laughs> Viewers, do you get eight hours rest per evening? That's very important to enhance our health and our immune system. And temperance and the final T, trust in, God, trust in God, depending on God to help us and yes. carry us through. Yes. Pastor, we are at the close of our Bible study, but let's close with an assurance. We were told that the seven last plagues will fall after probation closes. There will be no intercessor in the heavenly sanctuary at that time. Revelation 15, 7 and 8 tells us that no one, no being yes. was able to enter the sanctuary at that time. But thank God, before the seven last plagues were shown to be poured out, John gave this assurance. Let me read it again. I read it before. Revelation 15 verse 2. And we, I think we can maybe wrap up on this wonderful assurance. And I saw as it were, Revelation 15 verse 2, I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast over his image, over his mark, and over the number of his name, where did John see them? Standing on the sea of glass above, having That's the heaven. hearts of God. Amen. What are your Amen. closing thoughts, Pastor? You know, the Bible tells us, again in Revelation, uh, tells us that these are they who have come out of great tribulation. They have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. And so we have this great assurance that God will come and deliver us. And according to Daniel 12, verse 1, when, when we see these things, Daniel says, then Michael will stand, stand up for us. And so all we need to do is to put our trust in the Lord, and then the Lord will guide us through. So viewers, as we come to the close of our Bible class, our Bible study for this week, we just want to encourage you to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Remember, you don't need to be afraid. Place your hands in the hands of God. Follow his clear instructions in Bible. That gives the right balance between, between following 
guidelines of men on being obedient to God. We have the right guideline, guidelines there and the right balance. And so as we close, I want to invite you viewers, wherever you are, perhaps in your, in your houses, perhaps in your cars, perhaps at work, wherever you are, you have been impressed with this, this study, with what we have read, what you have seen in the Bible. I want to encourage you to keep studying. And just where you are, you may want to ask Jesus to come into your heart and surrender your life to Jesus. We invite you, when this season of virus passes, visit the Seventh-day Adventist Church nearest to you. And visit also our web pages, adventist.org or njcadventist.org. Or just type in Seventh-day Adventist Church. You'll see our beliefs there, and you can spend more time with the Bible as you draw closer to God. Let's stand, Pastor, as we offer special prayer for these individuals. Eternal Heavenly Father, we thank you for these precious ones who viewed with us today. And we commit into your hands those who have not given Jesus their hearts as yet and are struggling. Let them see the greatness of the sacrifice of Jesus in their behalf and make haste to surrender to you before it is eternally too late. We ask these mercies in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you. Let's do it again by God's grace. Yes. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life.